What's up everybody, Jackson with JT's Lawn Maintenance here. Hope you guys are doing good. Uh, today we're going to be going over some lawn care tips for beginners and what my first setup was back when I first started doing lawn care, which was last year. So last year, which was 2019, I was a amateur lawn care professional and I didn't know much. I just knew how to weed eat, edge, mow, and blow. I didn't know how to do landscaping, mulch, hedge trimming. I, I didn't know how to do any of that. Um, and my setup was I had a little dump cart for like a riding mower. You could attach them to there. And I had a Echo weed eater, a Red Max backpack blower that was real old, a Troy built self propelled 21 inch push mower and my big mower, which was a John Deere 42 inch LA 115 lawn tractor. I used that for the whole year, and then I started thinking about uh, the, the John Deere, and it really couldn't handle what I was putting on it. I mean, it did have 50 hours, and by the end of the year, I put 100 hours on it, so it had 150 by the time uh, I was done with it. And I just feel like it didn't, it didn't deserve that kind of treatment because it was a really reliable mower. I never had any issues with it. The cut was was almost as good as a skag. And it was just, it was a great mower, honestly. It got me through a lot. It was when I didn't have a lot of money. And I just, they, it, I owe most of my success to that mower, so. But this year, uh, I still have that Echo trimmer. I still have the Red Max trim, Red Max backpack blower that I still use. I still use those, and the Troy Bill. I use a whole variety of push mowers. I'll get it and get into that in a minute. But what I bought at the beginning of the year, uh, probably six days after New Year's Eve, I bought a Cub Cadet forty-four inch zero turn mower. It's got a twenty horsepower Kohler Command on it and a forty-four inch deck, and it. It's awesome. I mean, it cuts my time in half when I was with the John Deere. The John Deere, it took me probably close to an hour to do one yard, but this Cup Cadet, I can do a whole yard, edge, trim, and blow, and mow in almost 30 minutes. It's, it's insane. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a mower that stripes as good as it does, but also as cheap as the parts are for it. Uh, I had to put new blades on it. I did replace one belt, but that was about a month ago because I've been running it real hard. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it, really. It's just uh, nothing but good things to say about it. I Well, no, actually, now that I think about it, um, one of the a bolt that holds the handle on there. Um, hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Uh, my little cousin needed help with something. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, the bolt on the handlebar kind of broke and it just was sitting there doing nothing. And just it was just sitting there flimsy. It wasn't controlling nothing. It was still attached to the bar, but the bar itself, like what controls it, that wasn't doing nothing. So I had to put a new bolt in it and ever since then it's been fine. Um, the cut on it's pretty good. Uh, I mean, it stripes about as good as a as any other commercial mower. It's not. It doesn't stripe as good as a Skag, but Skag is hands down the best striping mower I've ever seen. Uh, you know, but X Mark, uh, John Deere, just um, you know, Cup Cadet. Those like the Cup Cadet Pro series. Those are probably the best mowers that stripe as of right now. Um, and then, uh, I just, there's been nothing wrong with it other than that little issue with the handle. That's been it. Um, and, uh, I haven't replaced it. So I think I'm going to have it for another year or two. And then I'm going to get like a Skag v rod or something if I get enough money. Um, but now I want to uh, talk to you about tips for beginners. Now, the first yard I ever did, this is kind of embarrassing, but I was doing it for $20, and it was a $45 yard. I didn't know it, but I was getting screwed. These people were not good 
customers. They never pay it on time, and I don't have them anymore. I dropped them at the end of last year, and now they're cutting their lawn, and it looks absolutely terrible. So that's their fault that they dropped me. Well, no, they didn't drop me. I dropped them. What am I saying? Um, but then uh, I, uh, you always got to make sure you do a good job on a yard. Make sure you edge it properly. Make sure you mow it properly. Get everything blowed off, including flower beds, driveways, sidewalks, streets, porches, playgrounds, and any other thing. Cars, that seven things right there that you all need to blow off. Cars, flower beds, streets, sidewalks, porches, play sets, and kids' toys. That's seven things. It's pretty simple. Um, but now, what you need to do to uh, build a relationship with your customers, you, you just got to be nice to them, you know? Whenever they come out, say hello, uh, ask them how they're doing, uh, then that's what builds the relationship, and then that's what will uh, make you more loyal to them. And always, always show up when you say you're going to show up. Never procrastinate. I procrastinate a lot, and I regret it a lot. I do not, do not procrastinate. Do not. That's a that's a, a one rule that I urge you all to please follow because a lot of people do it. Then the second thing you want to do, make the yard look good. You don't have to make it look like the, oh yeah, we got to make it look like the best yard in the block. If you have other yards on that block, there can only be there can't be one best looking yard on the block. You gotta uh, make sure that you uh, do the job with precision, expertise, and you gotta make sure that it looks good. And always ask the customer, does it look good? If they ever come out, anything you need to change, always ask them that in case they do, or then you go and jump on it and that makes you, that builds up the relationship between you and the customer. Now, lawnmower tips. I sharpen my blades once a month because I have 10 yards. I'm not, I'm not, not really all that. I mow three days out of the week. So sometimes Sundays if I get behind, but you know. Um, I'll use a grinder, like a hand grinder or a, like one that you mount on the, a bench grinder. Use one of those. I don't recommend using a file. I just don't really find any use in them. Now for push mower blades, yeah, that's fine, but you gotta do a whole bunch of blades with that, uh, then it's gonna tire you, out, tire you out. And I think the uh, grinder does a better job of sharpening it. Now you don't want it too sharp, but you do wanna make sure that it's not a blunt end. So and that's one thing that you gotta uh, make sure you do. Always keep your tire pressure and all tires even, otherwise you're not gonna get an even cut. Make sure your deck is level. If you have an issue, uh, don't be like, if it hasn't broke, don't fix it. If there's an issue that needs to be addressed, but it's still working, address the issue when you can. You don't have to do it right away if it's not broken, but pretty soon it's gonna break and you'll be like, oh, I, should've, I should've looked at it, man. But anyway, now for the next thing. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is trimming skills. So you want to make sure that you get a nice, crispy looking edge. That's what I. That's what really gets me going, a nice trimmed edge. Anytime I see a nice trimmed edge, I get to look back on it and think, man, that does look good. And then trim on around bushes unless it's edged and you've already gotten the tufts of grass with the mower. Always edge out the flower beds if there is one. If there's a tree, do not hit the bark. Just go around it, and if there's a straggler of grass, pick it up with your with your hand. Excuse the baby out here, she's not feeling well, but anyway. Um, now say that there's a pole that's able to be moved, and it's right by a, a staircase or something like that. Pick up the pole, set it down somewhere, trim it, put it back. That's how you know you're getting the precise cut. Now, the next thing, blowing skills, which I did talk about earlier, but 
these skills are kind of just simple. So do not say, I don't know, um, you blew the grass with the flower beds and you didn't mean to. I mean, I do it all the time because my mower doesn't have a shoot blocker and it's kind of hard for me to uh, not do it. Um, do not full blast the blower while you're in the flower bed and you're trying to blow out the grass. Do not do that. Otherwise, you're going to blow out all the mulch and then the customer is probably going to say something about it. Then you're going to have to fix it. And here's one thing. Don't work for free unless your friends or family is asking you to do so. If it's for someone you don't know or for someone who who does want to pay you, you, you charge them. So next thing, mower maintenance. As I talked about before, lawnmowers, uh, sharpen my blades once a month. I think I only need to change my oil every 50 hours, not 50 hours, what I'm talking about, 25 hours. And I have changed the oil in the beginning of the season, and it's the middle of, uh, of June, or well, no, it's the, almost the end of June. And just, Make sure that you got a correct amount of oil in it because then if you don't, you are going to be screwed, beyond screwed, beyond screwed. Now, uh, tires, you get if, they're, if your tires are bald and they're not grabbing, uh, then you should replace them. If the bearings, and the front bearings for the wheels are bad, replace them because you could, if the bearings go end up going bad completely and if you keep using it, it's going to wear out the bolt that holds the wheel onto the caster yoke. And that's gonna slice it in half, then you're gonna have to spend more money on it. Spend as little money as you can, but if you can afford the bigger stuff, go for it, man. I mean, that's your all's decision, but if y'all can afford it, go for it. Um, personally, I like the smaller stuff, like the 36, 48, 52. Uh, the 61, I, I don't really have any yards to do that with. If I did have one, I do have one that takes a little longer with a it would take. It would be better if I had a sixty-one, but it's only one yard. So, now say you had like ten or so yards that you need a sixty-one is more than yeah. You might want to uh, think about getting one. Um, but if you only have one source of income, don't finance because you're gonna have to keep worrying about pay, uh, making payments on the, on that machine. You know, I got. I'm I'm like B and B lawn care. I mean, uh, he says he pays cash for everything. I, that's what I do. I like paying for cash for stuff. I don't like finance. Um, it's just, I have, it's just stuff that I have to worry about in the future that I do, really don't want to worry about because I got enough stuff to worry about as is. And um, just, it's just financing, in my opinion, is not that, I mean, it's effective, but is it good? But if you have two sources of income, then yeah, that's fine. But I don't, I only have one. So now for the next tip. phone all right well anyway next tip as I was saying lawnmower mowing skills I always try to strike everything as good as I can sometimes I have to go over it twice just to make sure that it's getting a uh, good stripes I stripe every lawn even though people say you just you don't have to do that that's in the deal uh, that's my that's the easiest way to cut grass for me I don't do no squares I don't do circles I don't do that I I stripe the lawn I don't have a striping roller. It might not be a bad idea to get one. Say that, you're, that your mower's not that good at striping. A striping roller might be a good investment if your mower doesn't stripe as well. My cup cadet stripes fine. I don't really need to uh, buy a uh, striping kit for it. So I'm good there. Uh, mowing skills, uh, again, don't blow grass on the flower beds. If you can, do not blow grass on the flower beds. But uh, if you have to, Idle it down so you can get as little grass in there as possible, then go back with your blower and blow it out. Now, when you're going, say there's a car right by a driveway, and there's, then there's, there's a fence on this side. What you want to do is you want to turn around and then back up with the blade still on so you're cutting it. And so that makes sure that your stripes look, look properly. So now for gated backyards. Now... I don't recommend getting a 30 inch push mower. Me, me and a guy that uh, I worked with last year had a 30 inch XMAR Commercial 30. I absolutely hate that mower. 
it is so heavy duty. Uh, it doesn't absorb the bumps that well. It's way too heavy. The self propel doesn't work that well. And I mean, the cut was it was the cut was good, but it's just that mu the the that whole thirty inch thing. It, I don't really have a thing for that. But push mowers like a twenty one inch push mower, those are good for small backyards. But if you have I don't know. Say the front yard is as big as the backyard, which ranges uh, from a lot. But uh, say you have a thirty-eight, a forty-eight inch mower uh, for a yard that um, usually would a forty-eight inch mower would do good on. Then that backyard's probably gonna uh, need a thirty-six inch mower, if not a thirty-two. So that's why I would get a thirty-six inch skag. Those are really common in my area. Uh, thirty-six inch button, thirty-two inch skag, thirty-two inch button, or even an X mark. I mean, you know, I mean, it's your own choice. I uh, pick your poison, you know. But uh, that's the thing with gated backyards, and always get a Velky for a walk behind. I wouldn't recommend getting a thirty-six inch stand on, unless you really want to. I mean, I, I preferably I recommend um, thirty-six inch walk behinds and um, fifty-two inch and up. Uh, stand-ons and walk binds uh, they're good I I really don't have anything against any kind of mower uh, except walk binds because I can't steer that well you know you got the you know the, the levers you can't really make a good three-point turn with it you can't do it as well with a uh, like a walk behind mower as you can with a zero turn or a stand-on yeah the walk binds they have better hillside stability but they're gonna cost you more money because of the maintenance to um, maintain the Velkies and the mower. So that's gonna add probably another hundred dollars worth of maintenance, if not uh, fifty. But anyway, now I want to talk about um, uh, parking skills. Always park on the other side of your yard because then if you don't park on the other side and you park in front of the yard. You're gonna have to get under there with the blower, and you're probably gonna be fishing it out, one wondering where, man, man, have I blown it off yet? Uh, yeah, I just I wouldn't do that. Um, now say I just park my mower because I don't have a car. I just I just do lawns in my neighborhood. I can't drive yet. I'm only I'm only 16. I haven't got my permit yet. But um, what you want to do is just be sure to um. Get everything blown off. Make sure there's no clippings left on the gravel um, porch. Just make sure you blow everything off. I think it takes two seconds. If you got a good blower, a good you know a good blower when it blows at least ten feet ahead of you. You know it's a good blower then. You know, uh, backup blowers though. There is a pro. Uh, they got a lot more power, but a con of that is. If you don't have the seal BA a BR eight hundred CE or whatever it's called, then uh, say a customer comes out, you got to turn that blower off, and uh, now you're like, oh, I gotta take it off, and start it. I mean, yeah, that, a lot of people that I worked with before have said that, but they still say they prefer those over handhelds. Now, if you got a very powerful handheld, uh, then yeah, I I'd, I'd might go a few rounds with that. But uh, if you're if you're doing a really big property, you probably gonna want a backpack blower just it's it's easier to use and it's um more it's easier on yourself because uh you know you're not tiring your arm out you're putting a little pressure on your back but if it's a good blower it's lightweight it should be uh so it it shouldn't shouldn't really uh, do that much to your back the other thing i want to talk about is trailers now what i have currently that i take on the road I have a Lowe's 5x8 trailer that I recently bought this year for $700. Uh, I really like it. I don't like that it has a mesh on it, but I'm probably going to be replacing that at the end of the year. So I knew it probably wasn't going to last that long. But other than that, it's a nice trailer. Uh, it's lightweight. Um, I, I, I can pull it up a hill pretty easily. Uh, my dad's. We use my dad's van to haul it. Uh, I, I do have two yards out of my neighborhood that I have to use a trailer. Uh, the reason me and my dad bought the trailer is because, uh, this might sound a little crazy, but we had to put the Cub Cadet inside the van. I had to load it up with very sketchy looking ramps. And 
it was just really, it was really sketchy. I almost fell off once, but my dad was there and he was able to catch me. Um, and me and my dad were like, yeah, we're going to need a trailer. Um, because we got two yards out of the neighborhood. It's just not worth getting hurt for, so just might as well go ahead and get a trailer. This trailer's going to last me. I, I only need, I don't need two uh, mid-sized mowers. I only need one mid-sized and one small mower for me right now because I'm not running a two-man crew. I'm only, it's just me. So, um, I might get a 6x12 double axle when I'm, I'm more into it. Like, I, I might have two 48s or two 52s and a 61. You know, I mean, it, it only matters on what you got. And get what you can afford. Don't go for the bottom end stuff. This trailer is what I could afford. And it's all I need. If it's all you need and it's affordable, go for it. But if there's something better than what you need and it is affordable, then go for it as well. I mean, if you can afford it and it's more than what you need, I'll go for it. But, uh, again... I, it, this trailer was all that I needed, and it was affordable, so that's why I got it. And, uh, guys, uh, I pretty much ran out of stuff to say, so uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I'll see if I can't get a lawn care vlog uh, this uh, a week or something. I come back to Louisville Thursday, so I might do a video then. Uh, but, anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, long hair life, full life.